This is WFAN's Outside the Cage with your host, Pete Hoffman, Ike Feldman. And we uh, are turning into the local uh, UFC the MMA local world. Uh, we've continuously had some awesome guests. We've had uh, Frankie Edgar stop by. We've had uh, Shane Burgos, Jimmy Rivera. And now coming from Long Island, uh, Eddie Gordon. He's currently on the Tough Redemption Winner of Tough 19, welcome to the show, man. How you Asshole. doing? Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm excited, man. Uh, so, listen, you know, give us a little bit. Uh, we've we've watched. We're going on episode four, I believe, it's going on this week. Uh, obviously, you lost the, your your opening fight in uh, week two. Uh, but give us the scenario. How do you stay uh, composed on this show? Because you know you still have a long way to go, and you're you're gonna. There's a possibility that you might have a wild card fight. Uh, give us how you you stay motivated to be on the show currently. I tell you what, man. It's it's uh it, believe it or not, it's actually easier to, to stay motivated for many reasons, especially this season. Them having a wild card. So that being said, you know I'm thinking I'm obviously the favorite for the wild card. I'm a little bit different from most of the guys in the house because I never lost. So right. when I'm looking at, it, I'm like, this is my first loss. So now, I I want my shot at redemption. And when you talk about fighting on a tournament style, you know, the crazier the fights, the closer the competition, guys get hurt all the time. You know, especially when you're talking about veterans. You know, we're not like spring <laughs> young chickens, so guys get banged up. So you look at that, and it's a long season. Guys get hurt in training. Guys get hurt fighting. So the chances of, you know, somebody coming back, if not one, two, but three different people, is really high. And what did you learn from, from your fight? I mean, uh, you know, you obviously... TJ broke it down according to the, the the TV. He broke it down. You got two minutes in, you, and after that, then go for go for a takedown, and, and you'll you'll beat him that way. Uh, is that? Did you learn anything did, from taking out of that fight? That you? What's your strategy going forward if there is another fight for you? I tell you what, man. Like you know, TJ, I, I give him credit because you know he he's a he's a student to the game, and he uh, obviously did a lot of studying of, of fights. And to be honest, man, I, I keep it one hundred. I tell it like it is. <laughs> him breaking it down like that. Before my first fight at 170, it's spot on because I used to literally cut the weight the the completely wrong way, and I had one round of uh, of gas tank, and it was it was evident. And my coaches literally come to me and say, "Listen, you show you can make weight, but it's about performance, it's not right. just about you know making weight." So you see guys like a Robert Whitaker that that moved up in weight class and have a huge bunch of success, and it was the same thing for me. I actually came down in weight. So one, it helped my cardio. I had to do a lot more cardio to get to 170, and I had to diet and do it the, the right way. So him making that assumption was, was spot on, um, but I was, that wasn't the case with that fight. I give Tom credit, man, because you know what? You know, I hate this when guys say, this guy got lucky, that guy did that. No, he was just a better man for that one minute mm. of that round, and he, he took advantage of it. I was literally shocked, like Cody said, because I didn't expect him to be able to take me down. Before that, I probably stopped four of his takedowns yeah. in, in the first round. So I almost got you know too complacent you know in the ring. So I learned a lot from that fight, and I'm excited, man. The, the world's got a new 170 pounder, and I was talking to Pete. I did a lot of learning in the UFC. So like I'm going up on my 15th fight. I'm hitting my my, my prime right now. So I'm super excited. That's amazing, man. And you were obviously the 19th uh, season winner. Uh, do you feel that put a target on your back? Because uh, I don't know if Cody was right on this. He said that maybe mentally you weren't in that fight, the first fight on uh, that you fought in. Yeah, it, it was a little bit different, man. You know, I feel like a whole bunch of veterans being in the house is a little bit different. You know, some of those guys, if you actually look at the record and the experience, I was the most least experienced guy in the house. <laughs> so the one thing about fighting, you know, you're only as good as your last fight. So right. guys talk about records, this and that. I'm not a DJ. I'm not in here to worry about records and just <laughs> things like that. So it's like you just go into a fight and expecting the best person every single time. And I feel like I don't really believe in pressure because it's kind of what you put on yourself. I'm really, really tough on myself. And sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. So you can't taste it. You can't smell it. So pressure only exists, you know, how you kind of you know make it in your life. So I don't think there's any extra pressure. Guys want to go out there, make that money, get that UFC contract, and, and that's what it is. So I don't think it was any added pressure. What'd you do with that uh, 100K? What was the first thing you did? Yeah, listen, man, I'm a business guy, man, you know, so it's like, you look good, yeah, man. listen, look good. I, I, being in you know, corporate America and being in finance, you know, I'm a big investor, man. I, I use that to, to start other businesses and branch off. I'm a big believer in when you make some money, you make that money work for you. And that's nice. the kind of the aspect I looked. I love Harley. Harley Davidson took care of me, but listen, 
I never rode a bike in my life, <laughs> so uh, I didn't plan on starting to, to right now. And I figured, you know, I sell the bike, put that in my kids' college fund. Nice, it's gonna dude. it's gonna do a lot better, Lord. you know. Purpose doing that. So I'm hoping my kids get a scholarship. They're on the right path. So I'll buy them a nice car. And watch, you know? he's gonna buy a Harley now. Oh, I, <laughs> listen, they, my my kids wanted that bike more than I did. Like it was it was insane. <laughs> I knew that it was time for the bike to go, and I had four miles in a year and a half. I was Ooh, like, yeah. all right. I'm like, eh. it looks nice, but let's see you with the leather jacket, man. Listen, I look good in a leather jacket, <laughs> but I'm, I'm petrified on the actual bike itself. <laughs> uh, listen, so you talked about motivation. Um, the one thing that I, I saw, like working with Cody and his team. I mean, I actually liked his preparation going into picking the fighters. Like, so that that, that to me is like he was well thought out of who he wanted. Um, because he wanted the backstory, he wanted your history, he wanted to see your motivation, you know. Uh, so, so being on his team, you must have felt really awesome and honored about that. But after your loss, if I'm correct, they, he was pretty tough about about losing, and you guys got to go for it all. And what what is this? And he doesn't take losing uh, very very lightly. So, you know, did that hurt? did you just like, blow it off as like he's just blown off some steam, or was it were you a little? Man, nah, listen, I tell people this: like, as a coach, you have to know your players. That's what makes the good coaches great. You can't treat every single player, you know, the exact same way. And we had a lot of time before that actual fight. It was like a, not a lot of time in like life affected, but you look yeah. at a week or so. So he, you know, they knew me, and I knew Cody going into the show. And you know, I got a lot of social media, which is love, which is crazy. When I won season nineteen. You, everybody came out of woodworks like hating. When I lost, I had so much nice comments it didn't even make logical sense. <laughs> it was like weird. And people were like, oh, your coach is too hard on you. But I didn't see it like that. Like, I'm tough on myself. And Danny, Coach Castillo, said what had to be said. Like, like, when you know your ability, when you know your talents, when you know what you're doing in the room and it doesn't translate, it's, it's frustrating. And if, if I tell my kids this, if I stop yelling at you and I let you do whatever the heck you want to do, that's when you got to start worrying. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they were so passionate shows that they care. And guys, you got to remember this. It's TV. So yeah. they're going to cut, they're going to edit, and they're uh -huh. gonna, you're going to see like that passion. <laughs> Cody's a fiery guy. What you see is what you get. <laughs> nah. And, nah, you, you could never <laughs> tell that, right? <laughs> and it's like... Yo, they don't. They didn't show like you know, the the loving soft side. Like, ah, oh, man, like, right. come on, we like we seen you as one of the best guys to win the whole entire thing. So we want to push you like that. So for me, then there's nothing. There's nothing like I literally am actually going out, you know, to Cali to train with those guys because That's we awesome. have a great bond. And dude, they know what they're talking about. Like the proofs in the pudding. You take Cody from an unranked fighter uh, to, to the world champion, you know, in a year's time. That that's unheard of. So it's huge, man. So you know. I got tough skin, man. If to be in this sport, you you need it. You so it, yeah. sometimes you got to hear those 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 harsh words, and, and it makes sense. You know, you, uh, you know, not to digress off of you, but like talking about Cody and his and his team. You know, there's the whole rivalry between TJ and Cody, and uh, we were talking about a little bit off air. I like to get into it on air right now. You know, it, we talked about TJ is a great fighter, and we love you love watching. And then, do you have a connection with TJ too? Uh, part, believe it or not, actually, uh, I have a connection through my kids, man. My kids. They follow this sport like like no other. So wow. on the finale, you know, they actually got to meet TJ. Took a couple of pictures with them. So before the show, actually had like a little backstory. And TJ is a great fighter, like you said. But it the the, the drama is real. <laughs> people think it's just for TV. That's the farthest thing from the truth. Like it is, it's like a divorce. <laughs> Have and you now, seen them on social media? They're oh, between each other. It's, 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 insane. it's but, insane. But but where does it? Man, we know where it stems from. From from TJ leaving to go to Twain Ludwig. Uh, but really, is it? Do you side with anyone? I know you were on Cody's team, so maybe you'll see that be a little bit more, uh, you know, understanding with Cody's side. But is there like, are they both right? Are they both wrong? Uh, is it more Dwayne Ludwig being the guy that's like, I think he's the the catapult to this whole thing? And, and Listen, you're spot on, man. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Like being on Cody's team, I, I see, you know, his point. I see your eyes point, and I also understand TJ. There was points where shit, I felt bad for TJ. It looked like like a, like a, a, a confused kid, like just Ooh. like 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 left in the middle of a war and nobody really talks about it but I feel like the ultimate culprit of this whole entire thing is Dwayne yeah. like he's the, the the missing piece to the puzzle he's everywhere there when there's a fight that, going on either. don't oh, mess dude. with Miyagi that's, don't, no. that's <laughs> another that's another story like like, like it's 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 wild like I, I call it like what it is man and I feel like he is very manipulative and it might it's just weird coming from from my side looking in but like when you when you train with somebody, you build a bond with your coach. Like you know, and and Dwayne gave TJ all that love, gave him all that attention, and then for whatever reason, Dwayne packed up and and, and left. And it's like 
put TJ in a bad spot. He obviously wants to go where his coach and get that bond. And I don't think at any point, you know, Uriah them said, listen, you got to choose. But think about it. You can't have your wife and your girlfriend. <sighs> Yeah. And then you're sitting there like, you know, you, I'm going to hang out oh, with you. Dude. I'm, I'm going to come home and, you know, eat your cooking. But I'm going to go on dates. <laughs> I'm going to go on dates with my girlfriend. I'm going to hang out with her in public. That ain't it's flying, like, dude. It, it, it ain't flying. flying. <laughs> it's like, that's like life. So you got to translate it like that. Yeah. You can't go to Team Alpha Male where you're training with some of the best guys in your division. Then when you go fight, you're going to be flying, you know, another team's flag. It's it's like yeah. you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And it's, it's, a, it's a tough spot to be put in. And I, I feel bad for TJ because you have all that success and you kind of think it's Dwayne, but when you look back at it, like, TJ lost the, the belt once he left Team Alpha Male. So it's, it's, it's like It's funny seeing like, his new training now. Like, it's it's all white facility. It seems a lot colder. And you see Alpha Male with uh, the hungover Master Tong just <laughs> hanging out there, it's, chilling it's, out, good vibe. I feel like fighting, man, it's like it, the weird thing about fighting is that you need a good environment. You need good people around you. And I'm not saying that TJ is not in a good environment because I can't speak for him. Only he can actually, you know, tell you that. But he had tons of success with Alpha Male, and they have a huge bond, man. And I felt bad for a lot of people that has a relationship with TJ. You're almost like trapped in the middle. And it sucks for both of them. It sucks for Uriah. It sucks for TJ. It sucks for everybody. I feel like the only person that keeps winning is Dwayne. And <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's that's my outlook on it. So You think it would be settled on uh, July 13th? Or July Fight, 8th. July 8th. Excuse, July. Excuse Fighting somebody for 15 to 25 minutes find, finds a way of uh, solving a lot of issues. So <laughs> I'm hoping that after they, they got there and put on a hell of a show that they buried the hatchet. Um, I have a good feeling that it's going to be the case because at that point, there's no more if ands, or buts about it. Yeah. We'll, we'll... And, and uh, now stepping back again, folks, this is WFN's Outside the Cage. We're joined by Eddie Truck Gordon. Check him out. The Ultimate Fighter Season 25. Head coaches uh, Cody Garber and TJ Truck Dillashaw. MMA underscore UFC. That's, That's very Twitter. impressive. You That's go. it. I, yo, I'm very nice. active on social media. We might get some free team truck. Oh, I dropped the ball. I should have brought you guys some shirts. Oh, oh next man. time. Next That's time. it. I, shirts, I, I got you. Yo, anything free is for me, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, I got, I got you guys. We got Chris Wade coming here. We're trying to bring in Island Strong gear. I'm ah, like, I'll rock the Island Strong. Dude, I got you. I'm going to take care. I'm going to have to drop some stuff off to Chris to bring for you guys. Uh, there we go. We'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Nice. I appreciate that. But uh, looking back, we briefly touched on this before we uh, jumped into the interview. You said uh, you heard that the fifteenth fight, or maybe fifteenth uh, fight, or maybe you're experiencing now that you learn some things, you're gaining knowledge. It's experience that can't be measured. What uh, what are you seeing the difference now that you uh, you're kind of you grew up in the UFC, so yeah. it, it's a tough task, man. It's not like you were in a uh, King in the Cage or a WSOF, a different organization. You're growing up on the Ultimate Fighter. So can you take us through the experiences that how you're becoming more seasoned? Oh, it's wild, man. Like, it's crazy because when people talk, it's almost like when you're a kid, everybody says, slow down, you know, you know, don't go too fast, you know, enjoy being a kid. And you're like, yeah, 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 I heard it all before. But it makes sense, man. Like, things are slowing down now. You know, when you're first fighting, you know, everything's brand new to you. So once you hit that 15 fight mark, which is like the magical number everybody keeps talking about, <laughs> It's like everything slows down. You see punches differently. You see the preparation. You actually learn your body. Like some guys take years before they find which weight class is right for them, and that's happening at a lower level. You're not fighting the best guys in the world. So for me, everything makes more sense. Like I know what, what holes I have in my game because when you're winning, like you might have had that same hole, but but it doesn't. it's not as evident because you win. Right. So when I'm losing 20, 25 pounds the night before and, and I'm blowing through guys and I'm winning and I'm having all the success, success in the world, ah, I'm doing it right. But then it's like you're still making those same mistakes, but now you're like, all right, I got to fix that. This, this. So it's priceless, man. You can't put, you can't put a, a price tag on experience, and it's very expensive. And I think we touched upon it earlier. That's why drugs suck in this sport. Peds and stuff. It's not because the guy's going to be stronger. If strength was the only thing that made you a good fighter, you see all these bodybuilders, these world strongmen. <laughs> Ronnie Coleman being, being, <laughs> being, being world-class <laughs> fighters. But it's when you can have the age, the 30, 40, 50 fights, and now you got the youth to go along with it. That's the problem. It's the wow. knowledge. It's definitely wow. the knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and also, you've had the luxury of being around a lot of really great camps. So right now you're on Team Alpha. You've, you've been joined by Team Alpha Male. You train out of uh, Sarah's uh, training camp. And then also, again, Tough 19 
you were that Frankie Edgar. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a nice trio of of camps and and, and styles. Uh, who have you learned the most? I'm, I'm assuming Long Island within Sarah Longo type of thing. But who? What is, uh, is? Are they all different? Are you learning a little bit from everybody? It's completely different, man. And, and you almost like I was fortunate that I only had one team I ever trained with besides the show. So you see guys that bounce around from camp to camp to camp. Like I found a home with Sarah Longo. Like I got the mix of of the best stand up, you know, arguably, you know, in the world. So some of the best ground, you know, coaches in the world. The best then, Italian food. The best, the, the, <laughs> by by far, the best Italian food. No doubt about that. Hence the weight, the weight uh, issues. <laughs> but, but it's like I not I only have one, but two world champions. You know, arguably probably two of the biggest upsets in UFC oh, history. Yeah. Ever and then to, to go on the show and, and train with you know Frank Yeager and, and his team it, it was it was just priceless and learning things from them and then I got a whole nother twist of you know training with Team Alpha Male and it's crazy because you think that you're doing everything the right way when you're just in your camp and you're like a creature of, of habit and you get in like a little comfort zone and when you when you you're forced you know for six weeks it's almost like going on mixed martial arts camp so when when they broke it down like that. You get to go away. You don't have any distractions, and you get to focus on your you. And you get the best coaches in the world, and they fly in coaches too, that, that and other people. So you know, it's just it's a wealth of knowledge that's that's literally priceless. And give us the breakdown of of, uh, of tough if you can, because you know you you go there and and are you ready to fight right off the bat? Is it like jump in and you're first 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 day you're fighting? It was a little bit different, man, because uh, the uh, season nineteen when I won the whole thing, it was completely different. We literally flew in. You're in the Palace Station Casino for like one or two days. You're making weight by yourself right away. And then you got to fight to get in the house. You know, and then so it's like you, you're fighting like literally on three days. You hop off the plane, make weight, and you're scrapping. Go. And it's like it's like a whirlwind because you don't have your regular coach. You don't have your, your support system there. So it's completely different. You're cutting weight by yourself. So it's, 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 it's weird. Uh, this season's different because we were in, you know, there was no fight to get in the house. Everybody's like hand-selected. And you're in the power station for a week, so you kind of have to, like, you know, maintain your weight. And then you go into the house, then you get to, what, I think it was, like, a few days we trained, and then, you know, you get to the, the first fight. So it was a little, it's a little, like, gap in between. So it was completely night and day difference. So if you had that first week gap, then then what, that guy Hector, uh, I forget his last name. Oh, uh, Arbina, yeah. Yeah, but how did he miss weight by so much? What, 15 pounds? 18, I don't know. Something like that. It's Listen, that, that whole scenario was, was crazy. And, and being on season 19 with Hector, I seen this guy, you know, cut weight. You know, he's mentally tough. So I'm like, all right, this guy's going to make weight. When we were in the hotel, we were pretty much the same weight. So that for me was like nerve wracking. Like this dude, <laughs> he fought 170. This is my first time ever being 170. I haven't been 170 since like the sixth grade of freaking school. <laughs> so so I'm, pa- I'm like paranoid now. So I'm like, holy smoke, did I bite off too much I can chew? If this guy fought two, three fights in the UFC at 170, he can't make weight. What the hell am I? Am I really biting off too much that I can't that I can't handle? So it just, to me, it's a mental thing, man. Like, I genuinely believe if you put your mind to something, you have that right mindset, you can accomplish anything. I, like, I'm not saying cutting 18 pounds is the right way because I used to do 25 the night before. So, like, right. I, I know that. I'm like, listen, I'm going to make weight. Like, I might lose in a fight, but I'm not going to lose to that scale. That's, right. the, that's the fight before the fight. So... I don't know if he wasn't in the right mindset. You know, according to him, you know, we kind of got some back some back footage on it. He said he had to cut just to get to like 200. So he was almost doing like two-way cuts. Oh, wow. And so if, if that's the case, I can see where it's miserable. You know, you already made the cut already. So now your body is holding on to anything. And it was just an opportunity he felt that he couldn't pass up on. So it just sucks for everybody, man, because he, he literally... Ruined a great opportunity. When you got that phone call from UFC for for Tough Redemption, how how did that come about? Explain that to them. It was weird, man, because you know, I said after winning it, there's no chance that I'll ever do it again. <laughs> I guess it's the the old moniker, never say never. Uh, when I got that first phone call, I was like, all right, come, let me think about it. Then they told me 170. At the point when they told me it was 170, I was 220, and I was like, there's no chance to hell. I'm like. And I was thinking about making that switch because once I got my nutritionist, I was like, all right, 185 was literally a cakewalk doing it the right way. Uh, I could probably make 170. And I was just like, I don't know. What am I What am I going to gain from it? Like, I'm going to win again? <laughs> like, you know, you know, when I got released from the USC, like, I had a blueprint. Like I, like, I love Dana White. Like, people hate him. 
I like him because he keeps it 100. You yeah. know where you're going to stand, you know, and he tells you like it is. Some people, I tell you this all the time, people are afraid of two things in this world, the truth and success. And Ooh. most people don't want to hear the truth. So Dana told me, listen, you go out there, we like you as a person, we like you as a fighter, you have, you have the ability, go out there, get two wins, and then you're right back in the UFC. So, you know, I was on the path of doing that. I just fought, had my first win. Right, I so that. I had the opportunity to just fight another fight, get a win, learn, get back in the UFC. And I was like, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. So let me just give this thing a shot. I knew I wanted to go to 170. So I was like, maybe that's the, the chance. I want to be a two-time tough winner. So I just jumped into it. So, did you know about the 250K at all? Or no, that was I it. did not know about that. So that was... Come on, that business, was man. Listen, how crazy is that? You, I found out about the 250 when they actually sent me the contract for because people don't people don't realize like you get a contract and you know, you know for the for the actual show so there's a lot of you know stuff that happens in the background like legal wise and when I saw that and I didn't even know we were getting paid on the show oh wow so there was just so much so much more different benefits so it's like you get to go away for six weeks I get a vacation for my four beautiful kids <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm like listen you get a vacation you get to train you don't have to buy groceries you get pretty much taken care of. So I'm like, this is getting better and better as I, as I look at this. And now you're getting paid. When I fought on the first time on the show, we did we got paid weekly, you know, from actual, you know, Pilgrim Sports and Fox, but we weren't getting paid to fight. So it was just getting better and better as I did more and more reading. So it just made sense at that point. And it was like a, a, di a director path, you know, to the UFC. And it took the politics out of it. You go out there, you fight, you win, you're back in. Nice. So that, that was the beauty part about it. And uh, staying with Dana White, uh, I want to talk about his good friend Al Iaquinta. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dude, uh, dude comes off two years. He uh, he beat uh, Pearson, who was a beast. Uh, he was on the Ultimate. He was on Ultimate. He was um, Al. I'm telling you right now, he was on the toughest season of Ultimate Fighter. Like listen, that he was on a live beat season. Miles Jury beat Miles Jury. He beat a handful. Thirteen weeks being away. Like I complained about being set away for seven oh, yeah. weeks. Thirteen weeks. That's a sick. Live broadcast. Li no, that was, was that was insane. That was that, that that season was insane. But yeah, he beat Pearson, Lozon, a jury. Masvidal was close. He fought back. You gotta appreciate the heart. Comes out of off two years from flipping houses and uh, starches <laughs> Diego Sanchez, ultimate uh, fighter one season winner. First guy to knock him out, man. Wow. First guy to that. first guy to knock him out. Holy crap! And then all of a sudden he's a little iffy on the mic with uh, Brian Stan, but. Is Al the mad genius or the uh, the crazy science scientist in this whole experiment that he's doing to you? I'm pro. I'm pro Al. Obviously, as my team, as my brother, so I'm going to stick up with the right, wrong, or indifferent. But if you put, if you think about it, after all of those wins, after all of those great finishes, mm -hmm. nobody was talking about Al. Right now, he's the and now he he's the topic of every conversation. <sighs> he is probably the hottest he's ever been right now. People like controversy. We like car accidents. We drive on the park. We drive on the, on the parkway. We've probably seen a thousand flat tires, a thousand accidents, but we always stop. We always rubberneck. People like chaos. You know, fighting, it's in our DNA. So I think, dude, he's talking this shit. He's backing it up. So what What more can you ask for? He's probably the hottest he's ever been right now. The guy is 8-1 and one in the UFC. Wow. Like, like you, you look, he deserves, and like, his arguments... You can't you can't argue with his arguments. You know I could see both sides of the fence being a business guy, but you have to respect what he's doing in the octagon, and you have to respect that he has the balls to to say what he feels. Is he the only fighter that feels that way? I guarantee you right. not. No, I, I I know for I know for a fact, but some guys don't have the you know the guts to to sit there and and say it. Is he saying it the right way on social media? I'm not his father. I'm his teammate. <laughs> so, you know, however he feels he wants to express it, you know, by all means, go for it. Yeah, I, I think it's great, man. I think he's actually, I, I think it would be bad if the UFC, if they were very sensitive and they suspended for another two years. Then I, it might even blow up even bigger. Oh, no doubt and about it. would be on like uh, uh, 60 Minutes or something. <laughs> but I think this is great. He, I think the UFC, they got to take it easy, lower the egos, and just understand it's not like he's not performing. And yet he's kind of right. He's not getting a bonus from anything, and he's going out there and he's finishing dudes. So I think he just got himself a top five fight. And oh, we, no we doubt about talk it. About it that Dana like he puts the hit on the guy. Like <laughs> if he doesn't like Kane for being a part of the MMAAA, he's trying to throw in Ganu at him. But is <laughs> is he going to throw a top dog at Al to take him out, or is he going to throw at Al to to kind of challenge him, give him what he wants? Listen, I I, I think of it like this. 
I think everybody's looking at the wrong way. The UFC is probably eating this up. They probably love it. Like, like they, 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 they don't have to market it. This is one less guy they got to market now. <laughs> Al's marketing it for himself. That's a good point. Like, like Dana, the one thing you got to respect about Dana is that he doesn't let personal issues mess with business. Like, you look, he had, he made millions of dollars with guys that he did not like, he never got along with. So, you're looking at it like, Dana's probably sitting there like, Phew, this is awesome. Now I can match him up. Like, this is a bigger fight. You got to come to the Coliseum right in Al's backyard. Let me match right. him up with, 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 a, with a, a, a tough fight. And to be honest with you, I think Al probably beat. And, you know, some people say it was questionable, but, yo, Masvidal is a beast. Like, everybody see what he's One doing now. maybe a title shot. Oh, my gosh. I think my, I think he's going to get the title shot. And he he actually <laughs> he actually <laughs> deserves <laughs> Ah, Listen, I think he, he, he at this point, he deserves it. Um, you know, that's another stack division. But look what this guy's done. Like, you know, some of the people he's beat. And now he's going to put butts in the seat. But he's Smart Eddie good. Gordon. And thanks again for joining us, man. He will be fighting in July. Yes. Ah, there you go. There you go. One that. day we don't know. It's, ha- it's happening. July is happening. July is a good month. I, at, got the, I got the feeling. At truck MMA underscore UFC. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'd love to get those t-shirts when you... It's, 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 it's happening. So, so July, you have to come back again. Stop by with those t-shirts, man. Uh, I like it. That works. That works. That's it. And you can see him every Wednesday on Tough Redemption. Thank you very much again for yep. stopping by, Eddie. Thanks for having me.